Live from Stanford University, it's theCUBE, covering the Women in Data Science Conference 2017. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live at Stanford University at the second annual Women in Data Science Conference. This great, fantastic one day technical conference. And we are so excited to be joined by Yale Garten, who was one of the uh, uh, career panelists. Yeah, Yael, you are the Director of Data Science at LinkedIn. Welcome to theCUBE. Yeah, thank you, thanks for having me. So exciting to have you here. Uh, everybody knows LinkedIn. <laughs> My parents even have probably multiple LinkedIn accounts, but they do. <laughs> you serve, what, 400 plus million accounts. I'd love to understand, what is the role, uh, what's the data scientist's role in the business overall? Yeah, so um, I guess when people ask me about data science, what I love to kind of start with is, there are a couple of different types of data science. Um, and so I would basically say that there are two main categories by which we use data science at LinkedIn. Um, if you think about it, there's really data science where the product of your work is for a human to consume. So using data to help inform business or product strategy, uh, to make better products, uh, make more informed decisions about how you're investing your resources. So that's one side, which is often called decision sciences or advanced analytics. Another type of data science is where the, uh, the consumer of the output is really a machine. So rather than human and machine, so basically these are things like machine learning models and recommendation systems. So we have really both of those. Uh, the second category is typically called data products. And so we use those in virtually everything we do. So on the data products, much of LinkedIn is a data product. It's really based on data, right? Our profiles, our uh, connection graphs, the way that people are engaging with LinkedIn helps us improve the product for our members and clients. And then we use that data internally to really make better decisions to understand you know, how can we better serve the world's professionals and, and make them more productive and successful. Right, fantastic. So tell us a little bit about your team. It sounds like it's sort of broken into those two domains. So you must have quite a, a large team or a lean so team? So yeah, we have, the way we kind of ha have our team is that we um, work really closely within all of our product um, verticals um, and we embed closely with, with the business to really understand kind of what are the, what are the needs. Uh, and then we work very cross-functionally. So we will typically have in any, in any group sort of a product manager, an engineer, a designer, data scientist. Often it's from both kinds of data scientists, so sort of more on the analytics side, more on the machine learning side, right? Marketing, business operations. So really very cross-functional teams working together using this data. Very smart, sounds very integrated from yes. the beginning, really kind of by design. Yes. So that collaboration is really sort of natural within LinkedIn. Yes. That's very fantastic, so. very yeah. progressive. Yeah. And certainly something that um, everybody benefits from, right? Yes. Because as, as uh, whether you're on the advanced analytics side or on the machine learning side, you're getting exposure to the business side, vice versa, which that's really a great environment for success. Yes. Yeah, and part of, I think, what I, what I love about LinkedIn is actually our, our data culture and how kind of data is, is infused in, in the culture of how we how we do things. Right, yeah. which is which really, is not, really... Not always the case. It's not, <laughs> yeah. and it's cultural yeah. shifts. Are, we were talking about that with a number of guests today, and especially depending on the size of the organization, yes. that's tough. Yes. So to have that built in and that integration as part of this is how we do business is really, you can imagine all the potential and possibilities there. So would love to understand how is LinkedIn using data to recommend uh, ways to evolve products and services to best serve uh, all of its members? Yeah, so um, maybe two, two different examples of how we, how we do this. Um, one is um, what we do is every, every um, launch that we that we have, so every feature that we generate, we really do it in an online experimentation set, uh, setting. So we have a certain feature that we're about to roll out to our members, and we want to make sure that it's a better experience for our members, and better as measured by kind of the metrics that we've defined in terms of measures of success. Um, and so, uh, which is really aligned to what value we're, we believe we're delivering our members and customers. And so when we roll out features, we'll roll it out to a certain percentage of our users, test the downstream impacts of that, uh, and then decide based on that whether we actually roll that feature out to 100% of members. And so that's one of the things that my team is heavily involved in, is really helping to use that data to make sure that we are structuring st things in a way that's stati statistically sound so that we can measure the impacts correctly of rolling out certain features. So that's uh, kind of one category of work. Um, and the other category is really to, to do sort of opportunity identification and, and kind of deep dive insights into understanding um, into a certain uh, a product area um, where there are opportunities to improve the product. So one, 
Let me give you a high-level example. One of the ways we might use data is to say, okay, are certain um, members in, in, country, in certain countries accessing via iOS or Android? And if so, should we be developing more in differentiating between our iOS and Android apps? It's one simple example, right? Where we'll actually de decide our R&D investments based on the data that we're seeing in terms of how people are using our products and could, do we think that that's important enough of an investment to make to improve the products and invest in that area. Wow, very, very smart. What are some of the basic ways that data scientists can deliver more value for their stakeholders, whether they're internal stakeholders across different functions within the organization or the the members, the external stakeholders. Yeah. And I think one of the most important things is to really uh, embed closely into these kind of functional or domain areas and understand qualitatively and quantitatively um, what what's important, right? So uh, understanding what the business context is and what problem you're trying to solve. And I think one of the most important ways that data scientists uh, play a role is actually helping to ensure are we even answering the right questions. So as an example, you know, a product manager might ask a uh, data scientist you know, to pull certain uh, data or to do a certain analysis. And part of the conversation and the culture has to be, you know, what are you trying to get at? What are you trying to understand? And, and really thinking through, is that even the right question to be asking? Or could we ask it in a different way? Because that's going to inform what analysis you do, right? What really how you're delivering the results of this analysis to make better decisions. So I think that's a big part of it, is having this um, iterative process of doing data science. Really, it sounds like such an innovative culture, and you're right, yeah. looking at the data to determine, is this the right next step, is it not, how do we, how do we uh, maybe adapt and yeah. change based on really what this data is telling us. If we kind of look at collaboration for a second, um, you talked about the, the integrated teams, but I'm wondering how do you scale collaboration within mm -hmm. LinkedIn across so many businesses and engineering stakeholders? Yeah. So the way I kind of like to think about it is there's really, um, you have to invest in, in culture, process, and tools. Uh, so let me start from the bottom up. So on, on the uh, tools or technology, one of the ways to do it is actually to create um, self-serve tools to really democratize the data. So first of all, investing in foundations of really good data quality, right? whether you're creating that data yourself or you're collecting that from externally from the orga different organizations. Once you have really good data quality, making sure that you have foundations that enable self-serve data, basically. So for example, some of the things that uh, data scientists are used today in various companies really doesn't need a data scientist if you've invested in ways where business partners, let's say, can query that data themselves. And they don't need a data scientist to be doing this role. So that's an important investment on the technology side. In addition, making data scientists really productive by using and, and uh, right. you know, investing in, in uh, tools that will enable them to access the data is really important. So once you have that sort of technology, it, it enables your data scientists to be productive. The process is really important. So just as an example, we have a um, sort of playbook in terms of how do we launch features. And part of that is kind of, you know, bring in data insights in terms of which features we should be building. And then once you've determine kind of the, using the data and those insights, it's okay, how are we going to launch this in terms of experimental design and setting? And then what are the success metrics? How are we going to know that this is actually a good feature? And then once we've launched the experiment, analyzing that, where all of the stakeholders are part of this, right? The product manager, the executive, the engineer, the data scientist, and then kind of iterating on the results and deciding what the decision is. So having actually a process that the whole team or the company abides by right. really helps in having this collaboration where it's clear what everyone is doing and kind of what's the process by which we use data to develop and to innovate. Uh, and then finally, culture. I think that's such an important part, and that really needs to be sort of bottoms up, top down, uh, everywhere. It really needs to be a, a community and a culture where data is discussed and where data is expected and where decision making really is grounded on, on data. I, I fundamentally believe that any product uh, being developed or any decision being made really should be data informed, if not data driven. Right, absolutely. So. I mean, it, it, one of the things that, that I'm hearing in what you're doing is, enabling some of the business users to be self-sufficient. So you're taking mm -hmm. that feedback and that input from the business side to be able to determine what tools they need to have and how yeah. you need to enable them so that you've got your resources aligned on certain yeah, products. Yeah, just as an example, one of the things that we do, for example, is we realized over time that this isn't actually productive and how do we make ourselves scale? So we started doing data boot camps, for example, okay. where we'll actually train new people coming into the company on, on data and our self-serve tools and on how to run experiments and so a variety of different kind of um, aspects and how, even how to work with data scientists productively. So wow, we actually fantastic. train that. So this data boot camp really helps us to instill a data culture and it really empowers the team. So uh, this yeah, is anybody yeah. coming in, whether they're coming in for a marketing role or a sales ops role, they get the state of boot camp. Yeah, wow. and it's open to anyone, and you know, it uh, typically is going to be a certain subset of those people, but it really is open to anyone, and we're talking about more ways of how do we scale that and maybe how we put wow. that on LinkedIn Learning and, and make that more broadly accessible. Yeah, yeah. So, so you have quite a big team. How do you 
keep all of the data scientists that you've got happy? What yeah. are the challenges that they face? How do you evaluate those challenges and move forward so that yeah. they have an opportunity to make an impact at LinkedIn? Yeah, so part of the things are actually the things that I mentioned, right? So, um, you know, a culture of data. So a culture, it's really important and we, we, when we see that this is not happening, actually addressing that. Uh, so data scientists are going to thrive in a community and a culture where data is valued and where data scientists are valued. So that's actually a really important aspect. Um, and you know, luckily people come to us because they know that we do uh, value data, but I think that that's very important for any company. And so you know, I advise startups as well, and this is one of the things that I tell people that are founding companies is you have to have a culture which values data to attract data scientists, because otherwise they have other options. Um, the other thing is having these, um, these foundations that enable them to be productive, right? So these, these tools and these systems that enable them to really do high value work um, uh, you know, and, and, and invest in the right areas. So you know, start graduating from doing things that are more maybe repetitive or low level and figure out how do you scale that so that you can have data scientists really efficiently using their time for things that only they can do. Right, I love that this culture is sort of grooming them. One of the things that, uh, a couple of things I read recently, one was that, I think it was Forbes that said, 2017, the best job to apply for is data scientist. But from a trends perspective, it's looking at by 2018, there's going to be a demand so high, there's not going to be enough talent. How are, what's your perspective on LinkedIn? Are, are you, have you, sounds like from a foundational perspective, it is a data-driven company that really values data. Is that something that you, that you see as, as a potential issue or you, you really have built a culture of such, not just collaboration and innovation, but education that uh, LinkedIn is in a very good position. Yeah, well, so one thing is that, and I didn't mention in, in terms of the happiness factor, right, is that it, has, it is actually a place where data scientists look for a place where they can also grow and learn and be with other like-minded right. data scientists. So I think that's something that we you know, strongly uh, uh, um, support. Um, Again, for companies that people that may be viewing this and are not uh, in such environments, there are a lot of ways to do this, right? So keeping data scientists happy also can be facilitating meetups, right, with data scientists from from your local region. And so those are ways that people, you know, share inter information and share techniques and share challenges even, right? Yeah. Because this is a growing and evolving field. And so that's having that community. And one of the things that's amazing about this conference is that it's creating this community of data scientists that are all sharing, you know successes and failures as the, as the uh, as data science is evolving. The other thing is that data science is, draws from so many different backgrounds, right? Yeah. It's a broad field, right? And, it's, and there's so many different kinds of data science and even that is getting both more specialized and more broad. So I think that um, part of it is also looking at different backgrounds, different educational backgrounds and figuring out, you know, how can you expand the pool of people that you're looking at, you know, that are data scientists right. and how do you augment what skills they may not have yet you know, on, on the job or through training or through online education. Um, and so we're looking at all these ways. That's you know? fantastic. Yeah. We, we've heard a lot of that today, the fact that the core data science skills are still absolutely vital, mm -hmm. but there's some other sort of softer skills. You talked yeah. about sharing. Communication has come up a number of times today. Yeah. It's really a key, not only to be able to communicate, to understand, interpret the data from a creative perspective and communicate what the data say, yeah. but to your point, to grow and learn and keep the data scientists happy, that that social skill yes. element is is quite important. So yes. that was that was an interesting learning um, that I heard yeah. today, and I'm sure you've heard many interesting things today that that have inspired you as well. Yeah, and that's something that you know, creating this 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 culture is something that uh, even data science leaders around around the world were, were discussing this and talking about this. Are you know, what are the challenges, and how do we evolve this field, and how do we you know help define and help kind of groom the next generation of data scientists right. and uh, to, to, to be in a more stable, maybe better place than, than where we were and, and right. to help to continue to evolve it. And so it is, uh, yeah. The ev evolution is yes. a great word. Um, mm -hmm. I think that that's another theme that we've heard today. Mm -hmm. And as much as I'm sure um, you've inspired and educated these mm -hmm. women that are here, not just in, in person today, but all of the, what, 70, um, 70 cities and 25 countries yeah, it's yeah, being it 80 live cities streamed. And yes, and it's growing, it's amazing. And, yeah, yeah. and I'm sure that yeah. they've learned a ton from you, but I, it's I, probably just in the little bit that we've had a time to chat, I'm sure that you're probably gleaning a lot from them as yeah, well. Definitely. And it's the, it, we're scratching the surface. Yes, absolutely, and so well, yeah. there are many more years to come. Exactly, yeah, well thank you so much <laughs> for joining you. us on theCUBE. It's a, it's pleasure, a pleasure talking to you. We wish you, you continued success at LinkedIn. Thank you. And we want to thank you for watching theCUBE. We've had a great day at the second annual Women in Data Science Conference at Stanford University. Join the conversation, hashtag WIDS2017. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.